What's the weirdest slash scariest thing you've ever seen when at somebody else's house? I was nine and my sister was eleven, we were at my aunt's house staying the night. She had a weird husband. He made us promise not to tell our mom. He brought this huge pink floppy dildo thing out of the closet and chased us around. We told and never stayed the night again. And divorced him later. Ten years later said uncle is in prison for child pornography and seducing school kids. I think one of the most important things a parent ought to teach their children to keep them safe from predators is that if an adult ever asks you to keep a secret, you tell your parent right away. Adults never keep secrets with kids, just like adults never need a kid's help, with directions, or to find a lost animal or object. Those are big ol' red flags alerting you to danger. When I was a kid, I went to my friend's house for dinner. They ate straight butter, like it was mashed potatoes. I was like, Aiden didn't want to offend, so there I was, eating effing butter. My brain hurts just thinking about it. When I was 12, my friend asked me over for a sleepover. He lived in a pretty big house in a nice neighborhood and the family was upper middle class. Anyway, here's the weird part. They refused to feed me. The dad told me to stay upstairs while they had dinner. I was 12 so of course I didn't know what to think. He tried to be normal about it, he said we're gonna have dinner, stay up here and I'll bring you something to drink, what do you want? We have coke, lemonade, etc. So I stayed upstairs and drank coke and played Nintendo. My friend didn't bat an eyelash. Apparently, this was a normal thing. Later when I told him I was hungry he acted like I was bothering him. He ended up sneaking into the kitchen and stealing a can of tuna fish and just handed it to me with no can opener. When I asked if he could open it, he said I don't know where the can opener is ended up using a butter knife. Next weird part, it was the middle of winter and they didn't use heat. At all. So, it was obviously freezing cold in the house. I was sleeping on the floor and all I had was a blanket. I remember telling him I couldn't go to sleep because I was so cold. He ended up waking up his dad who came in with a pile of blankets and dropped them on the floor next to me and walked back out. I wrapped up in them the best I could, but it was still unbelievably cold. The next morning, they had breakfast and I was downstairs with them, but there was nowhere for a guest to sit at the table. There were four of them and they were having a sit-down family breakfast while I just awkwardly paced around the living room. I would occasionally make eye contact with my friend and motion for him to bring me some food, but he ignored me. I didn't want to say anything out loud because I thought it was against their rules or whatever. The next weird thing, they wouldn't let me use their phone. I asked the dad if I could use the phone to call my mom to come get me. He picked up the phone and asked me the number. He dialed it and spoke to my mom himself and told her I was ready to be picked up. I was only 12 but I knew I didn't want to be that kid's friend anymore. So I stopped talking to him after that. I remember the car ride home my mom stopped and got me McDonald's and I ate so fast. She was not happy about them not feeding me, but we just forgot about it and moved on. To this day I still don't know what that shit was all about. They were a very religious family but they were Christian, and I usually had the opposite of that experience at other Christian friends' houses. I also thought maybe it had something to do with the fact that they had money and my family was poor and we lived in a bad part of town. Maybe they didn't want my broke germs on their silverware? Any other ideas? Has this ever happened to anyone else? Sounds like the dad was incredibly cheap. Didn't want to spend money feeding you and didn't want to pay for heating. Spent the night at grandma's house when I was probably 11 or 12. Got sick in the middle of the night and was throwing up in the bathroom. Saw grandma in her flannel nightgown run by with her .38 Beretta. Apparently, I sounded like a bear. I used to build houses. After a HO would move in, we would get a call about service issues, a knob loose, valve sticking, etc. Went into this single lady's house, she owned two Dobermans. The dogs had peed on just about every corner in the house. She even left a giant turd mixed with her menstrual cycle in a toilet with the lid up. She knew we were coming in that day. What a pig. Not me, but my parents have told me this one. When they were first house shopping, they ended up checking out this really nice house in the city. Real estate agent is showing them around the place, and they get to a little side room. The agent is showing them around and my mom happens to glance into the adjacent living room. Right above the fireplace was a massive portrait of Adolf Hitler. The real estate agent was just like oh yeah, 
that and said it belonged to the previous owner. They didn't elaborate further. When I was in high school, I visited a friend at her house. She never told me her mom was a hoarder. I did everything I could to be polite and not call attention to the fact as we walked through narrow paths in the house. There were some rooms that were inaccessible because there was so much stuff. The weirdest part might have been that six people were living in this house like it was no big deal, or maybe it was when the mom got back from running errands with a bag full of junk from a Halloween store and just added it to the piles. A neighbor of mine growing up had a house just like this. I was friends with their son, but he never invited me over. One day I went and knocked on their door to see if he could come out and play and the mother said he was on an errand with his dad but would be right back and told me I could come in and wait. There was hoarded junk everywhere. It blew my little mind. I walked through a narrow passage behind her into the living room and sat down on the only chair that could be accessed. Random shit was stacked four to five feet high everywhere. He was panicked when he got home. Took me outside immediately and made me swear not to tell anyone meth lab. At the mall before Christmas about 10 years ago when I was 19. Ran into a quasi friend from high school who I ran cross country with. He asked what's up and if I wanted to go back and play some vids. Get to his place, dirty, but nothing crazy for 19, but have a super weird feeling. Play video games and drink beer for 30 to 45 minutes when I need to go to the bathroom. He tells me down the hall, I guess I opened the wrong door because instead of the bathroom, I found a meth lab. I was shocked to say the least and got the hell out of Dodge. Found out recently, he was hit and killed by a truck while on his bike going to work in a hit and run accident less than two weeks later. TLDR. At the bottom. When I was in fourth grade, I had a best friend, who we will call, Beth. She frequently came to spend the night at my house, and after a few months I pressured her to let me come over to her house for the weekend. I'd met her mom before, and from what I assessed with my 8-year-old brain, her family seemed normal. I didn't really understand why she avoided me coming over. The day finally comes for me to spend the night at her house, and I was. effing, Stoked. Her house was huge, they had a big backyard with a play set, gigantic TVs, and a nice DVD collection. It was my first time meeting her stepdad, but he seemed pretty nice. I also met her little sister who was probably around 8 months old. All in all, fun day so far. Things start getting weird the closer it gets to bedtime. Beth didn't have a bunk bed, so I had to sleep with her in her bed, not a problem. But as we're getting ready for bed, I can tell that Beth is getting very anxious. She started kind of pacing around her room and getting all teary-eyed. She finally broke when I lifted up her pillow and found a fillet knife. Now, I made at this point. So my initial reaction was to laugh and ask why she had a knife under her pillow. She snapped, IT's not funny. And broke down in tears. I panicked, and after several long minutes of trying to apologize, she finally tells me that she brought the knife in to keep me safe. That her stepdad came into her room at night sometimes and did things, and that she wanted to protect me if he tried anything tonight. My brain automatically kicks into safety mode, and I start asking questions like how long, what does he do, and does your mom know? She told me that she only told her mom after her little sister was born, and that her mom didn't believe her. He'd been molesting her for as long as she could remember and was scared that her little sister was next. That sometimes she'd stay awake and would hear him go to her sister's room after he finished with Beth. I didn't sleep that night. I could hear her stepdad pacing around the house in the middle of the night, but he never opened the door to the Beth's bedroom or her little sister's. The next morning when I woke up, he was watching porn in the living room on his computer. The girls looked young. When my mom finally came to pick me up, Beth begged me not to say anything, my mother was a psychologist, Beth knew she'd report it. I waited a few days, but I started noticing weird behavior in Beth the next few days at school, asking me about a suicide pact, self-harming, etc. I went home and told my mom everything. The next day, Beth was pulled from class by the guidance counselor and I never saw her again. My mom told me she was sent to northern Texas to live with her real father while everything was sorted out. I still think about what happened to her and her little sister. TLDR, my best friend growing up kept a knife under her pillow when I stayed the night and told me it was to protect me from her stepdad who molested her and her baby sister. This is the worst one in the whole thread. You did good telling your mom. When I was 12, 
I had a friend that owned several hamsters. Always like six plus at a time. The house smelled horrible. Anyway, I spent the night one night and got up to get water at around midnight. I opened the freezer to get ice and it was filled with hamster carcasses. Like almost two dozen. I practically threw up. I never brought it up and never spent the night again. She moved away a couple months later. Where to begin? I used to clean crime scenes slash hoarder's house. Bag of teeth. Arm wrapped up and hidden in ceiling. Many things. Hey, everyone needs an extra hand now and then.